Okay, and we're back for another video on mock exam solutions. Uh, this one starts off with question 15. The graph of the function y equals f of x is the graph below on the left. Okay, so this is our function f of x. Okay, y-intercept of 1, 0 at 2. Sort of a, a symmetric pattern here happening. Go over 2, down 1, over 2, up 1. Okay, which of the following functions has the graph on the right? Mm. Okay, I think I know it already. It still has the same zero, so it hasn't been shifted left or right. But what happened to the y-intercept? It went to the negative of itself. And what happened to this, this point over here? Well, it went up here, which is the opposite of it. Here it was at negative 1, and then it went up to plus 1. Here, this point was at 1, and it went down to negative 1. It looks like we've just negated the function itself. Not negated the x's, we've negated the function. We've taken every height and just switched the sign. Okay, here's another point to check. Our original function for negative 1 gave us a value of 3. I think for negative 1 now we're going to get negative 3, right? So here's negative 1, down at negative 3. So we've just negated every point's height. So it's definitely B. Okay, question 16, find the inverse of this function. Okay, uh, inverse functions, there's a process for finding these, and we'll go through that here. Basically, what you, what you do is... Uh, if this is our original function, I like to replace f of x with a y with some variable, but you don't have to if you don't want to. You can just keep f of x. What you do is you interchange every x and y. So every x becomes a y, and every y becomes an x. So here on the left, interchange. So we get an x equals negative y to the fifth plus 32. So we've interchanged. And now what we're going to do is we're going to solve for, for y if we can. So in this one we've got subtracting 32 over x minus 32 equals y to the f negative y to the fifth. Don't want to lose that negative sign. Then we want to negate, so we want to divide both sides by that negative 1 to get rid of that negative sign, which gives us 32 minus x equals y to the fifth. And then we'll just take the fifth root of both sides. The reason is because we've got y to the fifth here, and we know that the fifth root of y to the fifth is just y. So the fifth root. It's an odd root, so we don't need to worry about pluses or minuses. The fifth root of 32 minus x is y. And then we're done, because this is the inverse function where our input is x. Okay. So we've got our inverse functions, the fifth root of 32 minus x. And we can check our work. Okay, if we did this right, if you compose these two things together, what should you get out? You should get out just x. Okay, and you sh you could be really thorough and compose it in both ways. Okay, so I can show you that real quick. It's not too bad. So uh, we'll do this top one, and then I'll do the bottom one I guess as well. But I'm going to do this fast. So what this means is to plug in the inverse for our variable. So this is negative fifth root of 32 minus x to the fifth. So I just replaced x with the whole, the whole function plus 32. Well the fifth root and the fifth power cancel out so this is negative 32 minus x plus 32. So this is negative 32 
plus x, just distributing that negative sign throughout there, plus 32. Those 32 cancels, 32s cancel out, we're left with x. So this is at least a right inverse of the function. So that's, that's comforting. How about left inverse? So we just do the same thing. We're going to plug this in to the inverse function there. Okay. And hopefully we get x. So this is the fifth root. We're plugging into the inverse function. We're plugging in the function f of x. So negative x to the fifth plus 32, all underneath that fifth root. Okay, so we're working with the inverse receiving our function. This one seems a little bit easier actually. So if you distribute this negative sign, you get 32 plus x to the fifth minus 32. 32's cancel, you're left with the fifth root of x to the fifth, which is just x. That's what we need. This is the inverse function. If you don't want to check your work, you don't have to. You want to live dangerously, that's okay by me. Um, but that's how you can check your work for inverse functions if you want to. I'll go ahead and include the next problem in this video as well. Put the following in vertex form. And if you don't remember it, I give it there for you. I do the same thing on the final, by the way, because there's a lot of, there's, there's a little bit of um, difference of opinion on what, what forms should be called for quadratics. So this is vertex form. Um, this is not standard form. And so, uh, but whatever you call it, I want it this way. Um, so here we go. One, one quick way to do this is to use the vertex formula. Um, so I'll illustrate that here. The other way to do it is to complete the square on this, which isn't bad, but it takes a bit more work. So I'll just do it this way. So if you've got a quadratic in this standard form with an a value, ours is 3, a b value, ours is negative 6, then the vertex is always going to be at the x coordinate, the opposite of b over twice a. So for us, that's the opposite of negative 6, so that's 6, over 2 times a, so 2 times 3, which is 6. Okay. So what is the y coordinate now? Well that's what you get when you plug it in. So this is 3 times 1 squared minus 6 times 1 plus 1. So the y coordinate is 3 minus 6 plus 1, which is negative 3 plus 1, negative 2. So our vertex has the coordinates hk equal to 1, negative 2. So we're, we're most of the way there, aren't we? So here we go. We need to figure out what this a is. It's a big mystery. It's a big mystery, isn't it? What would you guess it would be? Well, if you multiply this out, coefficient do you need here? What coefficient do you need on this x squared? Well, it needs to be a 3, doesn't it? So we need to have at least something happening here where we're multiplying by 3. Let's try 3. <laughs> Not to be too tongue-in-cheek about this. 3 times x squared minus 2x plus 1. Let's see if this just happens to give us what we need. The answer is it will. This is 3x squared minus 6x plus 3. That's distributing throughout. Minus 2, which is exactly what we need. 3x squared minus 6x plus just 1. So there we have it. That A, the mysterious A, which we also called A earlier, is 3. 
So I, like I said, this method it works pretty well. And it requires you to remember this formula, not the method of completing the square. Okay. If you did complete the square, you'd arrive at the exact same solution. There's no, no difference at all. Okay, and that's it for these two problems. I'll be back for another one shortly.